Okay. All right, thank you and good evening. I appreciate the fact that you come out here tonight. This is the first of two workshops that the town is going to be conducting on the Okeechobee, uh, uh, Road, Okeechobee Boulevard and Southern Boulevard uh, corridors. Um, as an introduction, my name is Mark Putney. I'm the uh, town's town manager. And with me we have uh, Jim Fleischman, the town's planning consultant. We also have Stu Eichhorn here who's our town clerk. In the back, we have staff members Denise Rodriguez and Braden Garrett. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction, and then Jim is, has about a 10 to 15-minute uh, quick presentation to give everybody some background. The objective here tonight, however, is to hear from you all. And what we're going to ask is, after we've gone through um, our presentation, and if you have a few questions, we can answer those. But we would like everybody that wants to make comments to come up here at this table. And basically, they can address us and the crowd, and it would be very helpful for us if we can get this input. What we felt in the planning of these two corridors is that the public input is important, especially from the property owners along both corridors. So we have invited property owners from Okeechobee here tonight, along with the general public. We'll be conducting the second workshop in January. That will be Southern Boulevard. We'll have those property owners and, again, the public. It was advertised in the town crier and the Palm Beach Post to try to make sure we had as much coverage as possible to get everybody here. With that, let me just say that, in, as many of you know, in the, in the town of Loxahatchee Groves, the issue of land use along the Okeechobee Boulevard corridor has been a topic that's been discussed and studied numerous times. Uh, during this year, roughly around ju uh, June, town council adopted a moratorium on land use applications for the purpose of town staff to go ahead and study what should be done ultimately with both of these corridors. Um, the moratorium was just recently extended and will be in place till March 30th of 2013. So we're going to be moving pretty quickly once we've had these two workshops and garnered the input to move forward and to put together the planning product that hopefully uh, will be the, the future solution for both corridors. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Jim and let him get into his presentation. And then as I indicated, we'll be happy to try to answer any questions anybody has, but we don't want the focus to be on us tonight, we want the focus to be on you and the input that you can give us. So thank you for your participation. Jim? Okay, uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, before I start, I, I just want to make sure that uh, everyone has had the opportunity to uh, sign in in the back. We want to make sure that uh, we get a complete record of the attendees of, of uh, tonight's meeting. So if you haven't signed uh, into this point, uh, please uh, uh, do so prior to the end of the meeting. Um, as, as Mark mentioned, the uh, primary objective of this meeting is, is to allow property owners and residents um, the opportunity to, to express their opinions that are related to uh, future growth and development along the Okeechobee Boulevard corridor. Uh, we won't be uh, making any specific staff recommendations tonight uh, 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 regarding uh, uh, suggestions to uh, any land use changes or, or uh, land use policies along the corridor. Um, uh, as I said, we're, uh, we're hoping to uh, hear uh, opinions and uh, recommendations from, from people in the, uh, in the audience. Um, uh, at the back table, I have a, a, we had a series of handouts and uh, I hope uh, everyone had a chance to pick those up because those will uh, help you understand some of the concepts that we're going to be, uh, be discussing tonight and also give you an opportunity to uh, take those home and, uh, and review them uh, because uh, those uh, part of the uh, handout there uh, includes objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan which uh, staff is, is going to be looking at in, uh, in terms of making its recommendations. The, uh, uh, the uh, goals and policies and objectives of the comprehensive plan are, are items that um, uh, you may want to make specific comments on in the future or, or, or tonight if you have the opportunity to go through those uh, 
as we are going through the course of the meeting. The, uh, the handouts uh, consist of four basic items. The, uh, the first is the uh, town's future land use map uh, from the town's comprehensive plan. Um, the purpose of the future land use uh, uh, map is, uh, is to assign a uh, future land use uh, category or, or potential for, for all of the properties in, in the town of Block Edge and Grove. Um, you, uh, you can see that there's no category on the future land use map for vacant land. Uh, rather, the future land use map is a current expression on the part of the town at, uh, uh, as to what the ultimate build out of the town should be at, uh, as of today. It's, it, uh, it's possible to make changes to, uh, to that uh, future land use map by, uh, by filing uh, uh, land use plan amendment applications, which are then considered by the town. But uh, as of this time, that future land use map is the current expression of the ultimate build out potential at the town. Uh, in addition to the um, uh, future land use uh, map, um, We've, uh, we've included a nine-page uh, summary, if you will, where staff has gone through the comprehensive plan and identified uh, all of the objectives and policies in the uh, various elements of the comprehensive plan that, uh, that relate to uh, uh, development in the town as well as development along the Okeechobee uh, Boulevard corridor. Um, uh, in addition to that, we've, uh, we've included um, the uh, 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 uses that are permitted in the AR, uh, Agricultural Residential Zoning District. Um, uh, uh, all of the properties that are located along Okeechobee Boulevard at, uh, at this point are assigned the AR uh, future land uh, uh, zoning designations. And, uh, the one-page description we've included in the handout uh, gives you an idea of all of the various <coughs> land use, specific land use activities that can occur under the AR uh, Agricultural Residential Zoning District. And the, uh, the final um, uh, inclusion in the handout is, um, it is a brief discussion on the concept of floor area ratios. What, uh, floor area ratios um, are a, uh, a key consideration in, uh, in terms of land use activities throughout the town since uh, those ratios uh, set limits on the development intensity that, uh, that can occur on any given property. It, uh, generally speaking, a floor area ratio is the size of the building in square feet divided by the size of, of a property in square feet. Um, so, so if we have um, uh, an acre consists of 43,560 square feet, if there's a building on that, on that parcel that uh, con uh, contains 4,356 square feet, that would be a floor area ratio of 0.1. And the uh, lower the floor area ratio, the uh, uh, less intense the, uh, the development is. Um, that's uh, 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 sort of a, a, a nebulous uh, uh, concept. We'll get into that a little bit, a bit more uh, further in my presentation because it's a concept that I, I'm, I'm hoping that everyone will get to the point that they understand. Because uh, uh, essentially the two uh, basic uh, concepts or issues that, that we want to talk about at some point is uh, uses that uh, uh, can occur, and also how intense can those uses be. And the floor area ratio uh, uh, is, is one of the principal um, methods that we'll use to determine what the intensity of development on a given piece of property is. <coughs> this, um, uh, uh, this slide uh, illustrates the, the, uh, the existing land uses in the, uh, in the town of Loxahatchee Grove. The uh, red line that runs through the middle of, of the map is uh, Okeechobee Boulevard. 
And, and you can see um, uh, from this map that, uh, that uh, there actually is, uh, is a variety of, of land uses that uh, currently are located on the Children's Boulevard, uh, ranging from agricultural uses to uh, single family uh, residential lots to uh, institutional uses, and there is even one, uh, one commercial property, the uh, Red Barn, uh, which is indicated in red. Uh, Okeechobee Boulevard uh, essentially bisects the, uh, the town of, of, uh, of Loxahatchee Grove with approximately 56% of the town's 3,200 residents living north of Okeechobee and 44% living to the south. Uh, this this uh, slide here uh, is an inventory of, of the uh, town's existing uh, land uses. Uh, and you can see from this slide, uh, uh, looking at agriculture and residential single family, approximately 82% of, of, of the land in um, uh, in the town of uh, Loxhatchee Grove is occupied by either agricultural or residential uh, single family uses. And that is, uh, is consistent with um, uh, most of the uh, directives in the Comprehensive Plan that the uh, uh, town's principal goal is to maintain its uh, agricultural residential character. And as I said, it's a recurring theme throughout the town's Comprehensive Plan. Uh, this slide is, is an uh, aerial photograph of, of the Okeechobee uh, Boulevard corridor uh, running from um, uh, east uh, Folsom Road to, uh, to west, just west of the elementary school. But, uh, there's a, um, uh, in terms of, uh, of the study that, uh, that we've done, we've, we've concentrated on the properties that, that actually have frontage on, on Okeechobee <coughs> and there are a total of 71 parcels that uh, currently front uh, Okeechobee Boulevard for a total of 430 acres or about 5% of, of the town's total corporate area. <coughs> now, uh, to, uh, to provide a little detail, I have, I have several boards uh, over over here that I'd like to briefly run through. Um, this, uh, this is the, uh, the pretty much the extent of my artistic skills, so I, I have to apologize for that. Um, but, uh, as I said, the, uh, uh, the focus of the quarterly study is, is, uh, is to look at the parcels at the front on uh, Okeechobee Boulevard. This, uh, this graphic here uh, represents um, uh, ownership of, uh, of the parcels. Parcels in uh, yellow are, are owned by um, residents or businesses whose mailing address is physically in the town of Watsatchee Groves. Uh, parcels indicated in pink are, are owned by um, uh, individuals or corporations uh, whose mailing addresses are not in the town but still in Palm Beach County. And those, uh, those identified in blue um, are individuals or, or corporations whose mailing addresses are outside of Palm Beach County, but still in the state of Florida. And those, those in green are owned by uh, individuals or, or corporations whose mailing address is outside of the state of Florida. And uh, from, from the graphic, um, 32 of, uh, of the parcels, or 44%, are, are owned by, by individuals or corporations that are physically located in the town of Washington Roads. <clears throat> that, that represents the largest uh, uh, proportion of ownership. <coughs> Sorry. Now this, this graphic here. <coughs> represents uh, uh, agricultural parcels along the corridor. These are, uh, these are parcels that uh, have been uh, uh, designated, uh, have been assigned agricultural use classification by the Palm Beach County Property Appraiser. Uh, 
in other words, uh, there are bona fide agricultural uses. <clears throat> There's 25 parcels representing 154 acres or 36 percent of the quarter. Sure. Um, one thing that I've noticed when we've had agricultural zoning properties in the past, is it seems that in order for that to be on any map, uh, they have to be 100% use, agricultural use. So properties that may have percentage left out, may be due to homestead or simply that a portion of the property is currently not used for that purpose and therefore it's only received 60, 70, 80 percent don't seem to be on that map. Yeah. Is that the case here? Uh, no. no these, these are uh, properties that have either 100 percent or a portion thereof an agricultural classification. And uh, uh, in order to be a bona fide uh, agriculture, uh, you have to be a business. Uh, uh, this does not have... Okay, this does not have... have uh, uh, properties on it that are not operated as businesses. I mean, it, it could be an agricultural use, but it's not a bona fide agricultural use because it's not a business. Anytime you're a bona fide, you have yeah. businesses. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm it's, sorry, it's, I can't hear you. Anytime, anytime it's bona fide, it has to be associated with the business that that's a given. Yeah, okay. well, I just wanted to, to, to fully answer your question because it's, it's, it's possible that somebody could, uh, could have uh, <coughs> a, a large vegetable garden or or horse stables that they use for their own purpose. Those are not on. Okay. Another, another major land use along the corridor is a uh, general classification that, that, that we're terming institutional. Now, these are properties that are either developed or owned and, uh, and undeveloped by, by institutional landowners. That includes the school, uh, daycare center, fire rescue facility, uh, several churches, the Portuguese American Club, and, and as I said, a couple vacant parcels that are, uh, that are owned by similar entities. And you can see there's, uh, there's a substantial number of parcels that are uh, owned and or developed by institutional users. <clears throat> uh, in total, there, there are 17 parcels representing 113 acres, or 26% of, of the corridor that is occupied by these types of uses. These are, these are parcels um, that, uh, that have a uh, residential unit lo uh, located on the property. There, there are 26 parcels uh, representing 138 acres or uh, 36, 36 per, uh, 32 percent of, of the total area of the corridor has a residential unit located on the property. However, uh, most of those um, uh, units are not homesteaded units. The, the uh, units that are identified in, uh, in yellow are uh, properties that have a uh, residential unit with a homestead. The, uh, the rest of them are uh, residential units that are not homesteaded. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, there's a total of, of 30 residential units located along the corridor, uh, and of those 39 are, are homesteaded units. <clears throat> this, uh, this map uh, represents the location of vacant parcels. Uh, there are 18 vacant parcels representing 112 uh, acres, or 26% <clears throat> of the total area of, uh, of the corridor are, are vacant parcels. I'd like to talk um, uh, just a little bit about uh, Open Shore <coughs> Boulevard. Uh, yeah, those all those numbers add up to more than 100%. Yes, yes, because 
because there's some uh, uh, there's some double counting. There. I mean, there, uh, uh, there could be a bona fide agricultural parcel that has a residential unit on it. So, all right. And so, uh, uh, I should have mentioned that. I figured somebody somebody was going to add those up. So that way, exactly, John. He just wasn't there. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Okeechobee Boulevard. We were both on the uh, Okeechobee is, is a designated uh, county urban collector roadway and throughout, th uh, throughout the town it, uh, it's a two-lane segment and uh, uh, running to, to the east from the town it uh, uh, gradually increases from four lanes to six lanes to, to eight lanes. Now the, uh, 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 the county does have plans in its 2035 long-range plan to expand Okeechobee, uh, the, the two-lane segment from two <coughs> lanes to four lanes. Now that's that's in the county's long-range plan. Uh, however, it uh, it is not identified in the county's five-year capital improvement program. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the county is is uh, is charged with uh, periodically. Uh, making, I guess what, what you would call guesstimates as as to when this might occur, and their their most current projection has it happening uh, uh, during the five-year period between 2020 and 2025. <coughs> so, so if that's the case, we uh, we have um, anywhere from eight to 13 years uh, until that happens. Now. Uh, the county um, does update uh, its projections on an annual basis, and I uh, talked to the um, individuals this week that make the projections, uh, and they uh, they told me that the uh, the, t the, the two key um, items that they look at are what uh, where the traffic counts on Okeechobee, and what are the traffic counts projected to be. In, uh, in the near ter uh, term future, and one of the uh, primary considerations in making their traffic projections is uh, what's going to happen on Calorie Judge Groves and, and what's going to happen in the acreage in terms of the build out of residential <coughs> units. And uh, um, at, at this point, that's anyone's guess. So, so they. Uh, they have uh, projected the widening of Okeechobee uh, fairly far out into the future, primarily because they don't have any idea what's going to happen on these large residential developments to, to the west of town. And the other, um, the other key item that they look at is uh, what, uh, what are the traffic volumes uh, on Okeechobee Boulevard. Um, if, if you look at at traffic counts uh, starting in the year 2006 to, uh, to, to the present time, 2012, uh, uh, traffic volumes on Okeechobee have actually declined. Uh, rather than, it, it may not seem like it at rush hour, I understand that, but, uh, but, uh, but that is the case. Tra traffic volumes have, uh, have declined. Um, in, uh, in the area of, of Folsom Road from uh, 20,000 vehicles per day in 2006 to around 14,000 per day uh, in, uh, in 2012. So um, as long as, as the traffic volumes stay at that level or don't get back up to the point where they're approaching 20,000 uh, vehicles a day, then, uh, then the county is going to be uh, uh, fairly content to not in, uh, uh, not include Okeechobee into their five-year uh, construction program. Yes. Question is the the, the data you've given us there about the Okeechobee is actually empirical data. Have they done actual collection? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 They monitor uh, um, uh, average daily traffic. Uh, on an annual basis, and they and they also monitor peak peak hour traffic on a uh, on a yearly basis. So they and those they, those they studies are available somewhere on a website or well? yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I have a copy right here that uh, okay. you can Thank take you. with you if you'd like when we leave tonight. 
But okay. I'm sorry. In, uh, uh, anyone that has a question, um, please please stand up and state your name so so uh, so we can record uh, your name and address. We appreciate that. Yes. Uh, Patricia Althaus, one five one five one on Hill Boulevard. How is that data recorded? How is it collected? Track uh, track account. Uh, that's when they put those uh, wires across. Yeah. When was across the last the time that was done? Um, it's it's <coughs> it's usually done uh, out here the first quarter of the year. They, they told me that that's uh, they're probably going to be doing it. Uh, uh, for 2013, sometime in the next couple of months, I don't know Joe. Howard Bourne, he wrote, I'm just curious, is there any explanation ever given by anyone as to why the traffic count goes down so much? Is it due to lack of construction, therefore we don't have construction workers going <coughs> back and forth? There must be some type of thought pattern to why this happened. Well, uh, yeah, I asked them that that, uh, that question, and, and they don't they don't really have an answer for, for why it's declined uh, to the extent that it has. But but uh, they're thinking that uh, that a lot of it has to do with the economy and, and foreclosed homes. Um, uh, now, uh, lack of construction activity that that certainly could have something to do with it. But uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, they don't really know. plan of, of the town of Loxhatchee Grove has uh, nine different elements, uh, uh, ranging from land use, transportation, uh, all the way to recreational open space, conservation, and, and public schools. The conference of plan has uh, uh, next, and it has a future land use uh, map. The, uh, the principal goal of, of the town's conference plan is is stated in the future land use element, um, which is the town will continue to protect its natural environment and rural character in the midst of the urbanizing region. The town will continue to be a rural residential and agricultural community that has a great respect for lifestyle choices balanced with historical community needs. And Jim, uh, Ken Johnson, Fleckton, Canal Road. Uh, with that sentence you just read about wanting to preserve what we already have, on one hand, I agree with that statement. On the other hand, I see all these statistics on the expansion of Okeechobee Boulevard from two lanes to four lanes. Uh, in my way of looking at our community, if we want to do what you just read, instead of allowing that to go to four lanes, we ought to be doing everything that we can do to convince the people in the county to keep it at a two lane, but enhance that two lane by putting bike trails on it, by putting a median strip with turn lanes on it, and by putting a stoplight at D Road to break the traffic so that the people living north or south can get in and out and to reduce the speed limit from 45 to 35. If you go 45 miles an hour anytime around rush hour on Okeechobee, they'll run right up your bump. And, and, and these folks that live on Okeechobee I don't see how they get in and out of their properties right now. And the people that want to cross Okeechobee <coughs> on the alphabet roads, I don't see how they do it. So our problem, I think, is traffic control. We've got that, that's a tremendous problem throughout the groves. Whether you live on Okeechobee, you live north of it or south of it, I see it every day. And, uh, you know, our problem is traffic control. And somehow or another, 
we've got to get that point across that we need to enhance Okeechobee Boulevard with two lanes and have turn lanes and have a traffic light so that we can keep the, the character that what you just read. Second question, what is the date of this future land use? 2009. 2009, well it says on the front April 2004. Yeah. So I don't, you know, don't know where we, what we're using. Okay, well that's yeah, yeah that's that's the the, uh, uh, the official adopted date of the comprehensive plan is, is 2009, and that's the map that uh, that was in the comprehensive plan at the time of adoption. Now, um, uh, whether or not that, that that was prepared at at some earlier date, I uh, uh, I don't. Believe that um, so, it so makes too much difference because if you look at almost everything on the map. Yeah. So in other words, the data you're using is 2009. Is that what you're telling? Uh, no, the data that I used to uh, to prepare these uh, uh, these maps, this uh, current these maps, is is 2012. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you. <coughs> now, uh, now as far as the roads go, uh, I mean, uh, that's all. Uh, when the roads are going to be, be widened is, to a certain extent, a political decision, and, and the town has the opportunity to uh, participate in, uh, in making some changes to what kinds of improvements are actually implemented. Right. And I know the town has, has, uh, uh, has already talked to the county about uh, traffic lights, uh, roundabouts, uh, other alternatives to, to four-laning. I'm not sure exactly what the, the official status of those talks is, but, uh, but that has taken place. Right. Um, but, but as I said before, uh, uh, traffic volumes on Okeechobee is a big part of the decision to make the improvements. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, uh, uh, a lot of that increase in traffic is going to be generated by those developments that are west of the town uh, uh, out along Seminole Craft. So, uh, uh, you know, we can do all the, the great planning that, uh, that we want. If those developments uh, take place at a rapid pace, it's going to increase the traffic. Something's going to have to be done. Well, that's the reason why I'm saying we need to be proactive yeah. rather than after the fact say, oh, yeah, we want to change this. You know, we need to be up front and say, look, these are the problems we see. This is what our plan is. You know. Yeah. Nina Corning Ebro. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Nina Corning Ebro. Um, in reference to Okeechobee's decrease, uh, there was a breakfast with Jesse Santa Maria where he explained right around the time that Roblox was decided not to be done uh, that due to the decrease on Okeechobee that a lot of the traffic from the children went to Southern once it was completed. Now Southern is our arterial road. And frankly, a lot of this traffic should be going to Southern, unless it is further north of us, at which point it should be going to North. We should try to protect our town from being subdivided in two and see to it that it is possible for that majority of this residents that live in Los Angeles to be able to turn east, coming out of the north, uh, the north section, turning east onto Okeechobee, as well as be able to cross it. With it being four-laned, it is becoming a highway, and it being a straight shot down the way it is, that's going to be very difficult. Um, I think that a, with all the goals that we have for our town, including equestrian trails and uh, making it, you know, the, 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 the environmentally friendly town that we want it to be, um, I can't see this highway of a four-lane or six-lane of the choking dividing us. What I can see is more of a Main Street image where uh, 
where, for example, you would have um, a cobblestone layover over the uh, over the um, letter roads, so that traffic is being slowed down. You possibly could have some turning roads. You have pedestrian trails. You have pedestrian trails. If you four lane Okeechobee, you will find yourself with the need for pedestrian trails, for example, on both sides of Okeechobee because it's not possible which means that the property owners on Okeechobee will have to give up more land in order for this to make, to make it happen, which I'm sure they won't be very happy about. Now, being able to turn in and out onto Okeechobee is as important for the rest of the residents as it is for the people that own properties on Okeechobee. And therefore, I really feel that there should be clarity for meetings like this for everyone to be clearly invited and not just accidentally come upon a date that's posted someplace. And it shouldn't be the week before Christmas when kids are having their midterms and you're all extremely busy. This is, this is a bad choice of time for a workshop. Um, and um, I just, you know, it's not just about each individual person's need, it is about the need of the whole town. And I hope we keep that in mind. Um, I'd like to speak. I do live on Oak Chose Boulevard, Patricia Althouse. And uh, the last two people who spoke about not wanting Oak Chose Boulevard four lane don't live on Oak Chose Boulevard. They don't travel it every day. They don't try to turn into their driveway. And even though there's a no passing, you know, the double yellow lines, inevitably, Inevitably, every day, someone pulls out to pass on, you know, even in no passing zone, five o'clock, even before five o'clock, you can go to D Road. The traffic is backed up D Road for probably a half a mile, trying to get out on the Okeechobee Road. Um, if it was four lane, at least there would be a passing lane for these maniacs that drive they don't pay any attention to the 45 mile an hour speed limit. They don't pay any attention to people with their blinkers on trying to get into their driveway or out of their driveway. They don't pay any attention to that. They're just racing down up the to the two lanes. So um, bear in mind that the people that live on up the Boulevard would not like to see fatalities. Um, and it, it will happen. Folks, if we can, if you have questions, that's fine. I'd like you to hold your comments, though, so we can get, let Jim get through the presentation. And we'll listen all night if we have to. So, Jim, you can wrap it up. Okay. All right. Well, it, it, it's, it's obvious that uh, a lot of people have a lot to say, so I'm going to try to get through this real quickly here. Um, okay. One of what, uh, one of the key the key handouts. Uh, that, that are in your package are, um, it's a one-pager, it's, it's entitled the uh, AR Agricultural uh, Residential Zoning District. And um, uh, if you look at, if you look at the town's uh, future land use map, um, virtually the entire town uh, is assigned the RR5, Rural Residential 5, uh, future land use category, and by, by looking at that, uh, you, that uh, you might think that uh, uh, the the opportunities for uh, for development are extremely limited. However, if if you look at the um, uh, uh, the handout in the AR district, there um, it, it might surprise you with some of the potential opportunities that, uh, that are available to uh, do some some development uh, activities underneath the town's uh, RR5 future land use category. That, that's why I wanted to uh, include that in the package so, so that you could uh, start thinking uh, uh, about those kinds of, of, of uses along the corridor. And it's possible that uh, uh, some of those uses have, have some fairly uh, strict uh, uh, limitations under the land development code as it's written right now. Um, I think that there might be some opportunities to, to, uh, uh, to expand um, uh, those, uh, uh, 
uh, land use types to make them less restrictive and give the uh, property owners along Okeechobee opportunities to, to uh, implement uses that are currently uh, currently allowed but uh, but restricted along the road. <coughs> Um, and, and as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, one of the key concepts that we're going to be looking at is uh, the, the concept of floor area ratio. That, that's the last of the handouts. Um, as I said before, the, uh, uh, the floor area ratio is the square footage of the building divided by the square footage of the property that it sits on. And, and that, uh, that gives that gives you a number, um, and the lower that number is, the uh, less intense the, uh, the development is on uh, on the property. And uh, in that handout, I've, I've gone through um, the uh, different land uses that I summarized on those on those boards to uh, just to give you an idea of what the uh, floor area ratios currently are in uh, in the various land use categories along Okeechobee. And you can see that the uh, wholesale nurseries have a very low FAR, which you, which you would expect is uh, uh, zero, uh, meaning that there are uh, no buildings on the property uh, all the way to 0.0344. And uh, residential properties range up, range up to 0.088. The, uh, the highest FAR along the corridor is, uh, is the red barn, which is at 0.1652. So, so you can get, uh, uh, you can sort of uh, get a feel for the range of FARs along the corridor by, by looking at the red barn on the high side and uh, the wholesale nursery properties on the low side. And then we also have uh, uh, some other uses in there, such as the churches and, and institutional properties. Um, uh, I, I, I'd like everyone to to think about the concept of, of floor area ratio and, and over the course of a while we are um, uh, reviewing the comprehensive plan, uh, any thoughts uh, that you have on, on, on what the maximum FARs might be along the border, uh, we, uh, we would like to hear um, uh, uh, any input that you have on that. So, um, with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up and open and open it up to questions. Uh, uh, before we open it up, we did get one. Oh, okay. We got two emails where the the uh, property owners have asked that we read uh, their comments into the record as they were not able to attend tonight. Uh, the first is from Jerry and Pat Hastings, um, and their street address is 15720 Okeechobee. That's the south side of Okeechobee, a little bit west of B Road. Uh, we cannot attend the workshop set for tomorrow night. It is my understanding that since we cannot be there, we may voice our opinion by email and it will be read at the meeting. We own the property located at 15720 Okeechobee Road. It is five acres. We have owned land in what is now known as Loxatchee Grove for over 30 years. We have owned the corner of A and D we owned close to the C Road corner and 162nd Street. All these properties are on Okeechobee Road. We have watched the area grow and enjoyed having our business there. Our question, like so many others at this meeting, is why are you only planning commercial on Southern Boulevard? We do not know of any small town that puts the commercial zoning that far at the far south end of the town when there is what could be considered, quote, Main Street, unquote, right down the middle. I would bet if you did a traffic study of what road is traveled, most by Loxatchee Grove's residents, you would find most frequent Okeechobee Road. It only makes sense to have a commercial that is best located for all of your town. You're not looking to satisfy the general public of Palm Beach County going to Line Country Safari or the residents of Fox Trail or Deer Run or Wellington, you helped create this quote, town, unquote. So make it a town that works for the people who live in this town. I also think if you consider the tax dollars that you will get if you had commercial on Okeechobee Road, 
versus Southern Boulevard, you would have a lot more revenue coming in. Thank you all for your time and consideration, Jerry and Pat Hastings, 888 Farms, LLC. We received a <clears throat> second email from Pastor Calvin, I believe he pronounced it Myela, Myela, Myela. Um, he had, it indicates here are a few allowances I am strongly in favor of. One, improvements to Okeechobee Boulevard that start with widening it to four lanes with a center turning lane all the way. Also, the addition of a traffic light at the intersection of D or E roads to better enforce a 45 um, mile per hour speed limit. Two, the inclusion of light commercial, small business development along Okeechobee Corridor. It is simply illogical to believe that homes will be built on such large tracts of land. Agricultural and equestrian uses have been hit very hard by the economy as evidenced by all the for sale signs along the corridor. Property values are also being kept depressed due to the present limited uses allowed in the current zoning and land use. And he represents the Acts 2 worship center. Okay, so with that, what we'd like to do is two parts. First of all, if there are any questions of Jim, as we finish that portion, we'll take those now. And then once those questions are answered, and please just make them questions, because then we're going to ask that everybody come up and give us their input as to what they would like to tell us relative to the, the effort. So with that, sir. My name is Aldo Brazil. I own land on Chubby Boulevard. And uh, we're going to get out the time. But Chubby Boulevard needs to be wanting to be made for land and the attorney lane. And we do need commercial on Chubby Boulevard. I agree with the email that you received. Because of Chubby Boulevard, like it or not, it's going to expand. It was going to, it was going to fall behind the eight ball. Send all bread that's done. All the building is going to go on by the school. That land is going to be developed right on the Semo Press. And all the traffic is going to go up to the boulevard. Like it or not, traffic is going to go that way. So we're going to get with the time. We're going to end up fighting traffic on two lane roads. And somebody's going to get killed. So I think it makes sense to get the ball rolling and get in and to sell it to do what everybody else is doing. So that's it. Also, we're asking everybody to come up. We do have a, a recorder there so we can catch your comments. Also, <laughs> the, this, this meeting is being videotaped, so we want to get you on videotape as well. And also for the young lady recording over there. So uh, with that, if you would like to get up and make any comments, please just state your name and let us know what you think. I'll break the ice. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me my comments. <laughs> writing as well. All right. uh, my name's Kieran Gilday. I'm a land planner. Most of you all know that. I represent Bill Day, who I'm sitting next to. Uh, and I want, want to hit on a bunch of comments. In fact, I've heard some of the comments already. And uh, and Lena and I think are going to agree on some of the, the issues brought up, because she had one of my comments she's already made for me. Uh, but what I'd like to do is, first of all, for the record, just say that you know Bill Day, as you know, made an application for a commercial land use. Uh, he received a recommendation from your staff as being consistent with the comprehensive plan and being an appropriate location. He also re received a recommendation from the Zoning Commission, although his project was ultimately denied. His position continues to be that as it relates to his particular property that it's in an area that's appropriate for commercial. So that's for the record. Uh, the second thing, I think there's two things he said, Nina, I've already agreed you got. I agree 100% that getting a notice a week ago, even for the Okeechobee owners who actually did get a letter, never mind people who had to maybe stumble upon it in a legal act, was way too short notice. And our, our immediate reaction was they don't really want to know what we think. And that was such the Okeechobee, mm -hmm. and I think the residents who don't live in Okeechobee made me think that too. I just think the timing was too short and wasn't good. And 
we had a big workshop at a church, and a lot of us attended it two years ago, and had basically the same discussion at that time, which didn't come to any consensus, but we were kind of saying, what can happen here? Being that my negative comment, now I'm getting into a positive comment, because I do think some things can happen. And, and I want to think a little differently than what I read in the blogs. It, it always comes to be, should it be commercial, <coughs> shouldn't it be commercial? How can you have four or five miles of commercial? That doesn't make sense. And so it's always an all or nothing attribute. And I don't think that just sensibly you're going to have 100% commercial up and down of Joby. I don't think anyone here is saying they're market for it. But there probably are places for different uses. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Uh, we also did analysis, came up with much the same information as you. And you know, basically what we found is that there's a wide variety of uses out there already. Uh, it goes all the way from commercial being the Red Barn to institutional being the churches, clubs, fire stations, school, quasi-industrial, various businesses that store vehicles on the property or <laughs> landscape maintenance services occurring on it. Uh, nurseries, both wholesale and retail, of all different shapes and stripes and some residential. So there's already a mix. Some of those uses are already set there. They've gone to be there for a long time. So clearly, we're never going to look at a situation where we see all commercial uses of any type, whether it be retail or office, uh, on the area. There's an interesting thing, and this is why I, I'm kind of going step by step. I think you're going to need to think much broader and take more time than March 30th to get to something that actually is good for the town. But what we counted for, and it's pretty close to what, Jim, you came up with, is we looked at all the uh, single-family homes. And while there were homes built as single-family, many of them uh, are not only not used for single-family, they're not used for residential. They're homes that were built, and now they're essentially offices for businesses. We came up with 11 single-family homes that still were used for, in our opinion, as single-family homes, but we went and said, when were they built? The last single-family home to be built along Okeechobee Road was actually in 2001, which I thought was pretty good, only 11 years ago. The second to the last was built 22 years ago. And then the remainder of those homes that are out there all were built generally in the area of 30 to 40 years ago. What that says to me is there is a trend based upon what a person who lives in Okeechobee just said, that if you're looking for a place to live, and most of AR within Loxahatchee Groves is primarily a property that's primary purpose is residential, but with all the amenities that a residential agricultural lifestyle gives to it. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, you're not looking for Okeechobee. You're going down one of those side roads where you can actually have a home and a house and not have all kinds of vehicles going by. And to the gentleman in the back, absolutely the downturn of construction that occurred in this had a huge effect on the amount of traffic. Obviously, everything that had been built at the acreage helped your skelter. They had to get there somehow, and Okeechobee was one of the ways it got there. So, so that being the case, what I'm saying is I think that we need to get beyond the issue of use to a certain extent and talk about maybe a variety of uses and, and some of the things, and frankly I think FAR is probably not one of the things either, but I think we do need to do design and that's the other thing I heard I mean it, not just now but many times talked about is Okeechobee's an opportunity. As a t it's a two-lane road, nothing's been done to it. <coughs> Uh, it's an ugly road, it doesn't look good, it has really bad edges on it, but the power's in the hands of the town to make Okeechobee a Main Street, and I've heard two people say Main Street tonight, and that Main Street could service as the center of the town. When we think of town, we always think of a town as a place which started with a core, and then it grew up from the core. Uh, Loxahatchee isn't that. It may have been back in the 20s when Southern Boulevard was just a little, you know, dirt road getting out to the west, and that's where the early Loxahatchee started. 
But right now, if you look at that map, and I, somebody said in one of the comments, Okeechobee's in the middle of the town of Waxahachie. And so you kind of say is Waxahachie's a town in name only, uh, but it's not a town in spirit, and it's not a town in looks, but it could be made one if the proper design, when I say proper design, it's the design of Okeechobee Road, it's the landscaping along it, the width of buffers, are there going to be equestrian trails worked into that program? Are there going to be fence lines? Is there going to be any kind of consistency so that when you go through where the cross streets come forward, what do you do with the cross streets? Do you change the payment pattern? There are a lot of, where do you put the buildings? Do you say the buildings, instead of FAR, they have built two lines that we don't want parking lots on Okeechobee Road, but buildings fronting on Okeechobee Road may be a good alternative. I think that that design charrette needs to take place in order to determine what can go on Okeechobee Road. But if that's the case, then a lot of uses, some of them being commercial and some of them being the churches and some of them being other institutional, could actually fit there and function. Uh, my last thing, so that's where I'd like to see us to go. I'd see us broaden it out and say, you know, how do you design Okeechobee Road so it makes a positive statement? And if it does, then it makes, it, makes all of Loxahatchee a better place. Because people don't get their first impression of Loxahatchee as having to come down to Okeechobee, Okeechobee before you can turn off and get somewhere else, which is not a positive experience. Last thing. Currently, your plan tends to push all the commercial to Southern. That's a bad plan. I mean, it's flat out. I know it's there because of history, but if, if what's happening down in Southern, the commercial in Southern, in my opinion, I call highway commercial. It's there because all the highways are there. It's got to get plenty of use from uh, Wellington, Royal Palm Beach, some from Waxahachie, plenty from the communities out west. But it's not the town center of Loxahatchee, it'll never be. It'll be an income stream for Loxahatchee, and maybe as a benefit to that. But if, if you're going to do that, if you're saying the town's supposed to be servicing Loxahatchee residents, why would you tell people who live on the north side of Okeechobee that the services that are provided for you if you want to stay in town is to drive all the way south across Okeechobee, which we hear is a nightmare, and then drive another two miles south for your services. A town usually has its services in its center, especially the services that are useful. Uh, for all the loved or hated of the Red Barn, the Red Barn serves a purpose, and it does pretty successfully, and one of the reasons is it's really convenient. It's in the center. It's easy to come from the south. It's easy to come from the north. If you're there and they have what you need, and you don't have to go any further, and you live in Loxahatchee, it's your first stop. So those are kind of our ideas. And so what I don't want to do is leave you tonight and come back and say, half the people don't want any commercial, half the people who have property do want commercial. We have no consensus, because that's not going to get you anywhere. I think you need to leave and say, there's a consensus that there's a way to do it better. And Loxahatchee, if there ever is going to be an identity to Loxahatchee, it's going to be Okeechobee. It's not going to be Southern Boulevard. And that's what I have to say, which is wordier than Bill would say it, but I think it has some validity. Thank you. Thank you. Virginia? Virginia Standish 15410 North Road. I strongly object to the statement that this town has no spirit. This town incorporated and is presently fighting to defend its identity and spirit. So I really object to that. Um, regarding the traffic on Okeechobee, I'd like to see, you know, several people have opinions, especially the homeowners and landowners on Okeechobee Boulevard. Um, perhaps, I don't know, in Palm Beach County, usually it's a done deal. You know, somehow we all think we can change what Palm Beach County is doing, that's great. And perhaps we can ask them to come up with alternative designs with the turn lanes. You know, something that doesn't have to be four lane, it doesn't have to be two lane, but give us alternatives to look at. Um, as far as, 
My key concern is those properties that are ag and residential right now is the tax appraiser's office incorrectly taxing ag residential properties and commercial and pressuring them to feel they have to become commercial. That is a strong issue and something I think the town management needs to address with them. As far as homes not being built on Okeechobee Boulevard, for those of us who have lived here, we remember that it was a dirt road mm -hmm. and there were trailers and it was agricultural. Um, I would share their confusion if I was a landowner on Okeechobee whether I'd want to build because of the confusion of Palm Beach County, which is now pro-development. There are very few large parcels left in this county and we do have to protect our town. The idea of a main street in Moxahatchee Grove I find fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think one concept, <clears throat> and I'll hear comments, but when we realize that rents will not stay the same for the next 30 years, they will increase, that there are grants out there available. If there is the possibility, and I speak for myself as a resident only, if there's a possibility of a town hall with a community center on Okeechobee Boulevard as part of the main street, with cost recovery, running out the community hall for weddings, recovering the cost of the building, making it cost efficient, would be something for a Main Street concept. Um, I found it very interesting when Odoms showed up on Okeechobee Boulevard. All I could think of was State Road 7, here we come, eight lanes, here we come. Um, developers follow agriculture. We all know that. If you've lived in Florida or any agricultural area, you know that. They're coming for us. My concern is we're using the term commercial. We're saying all these different varieties. We're saying commercial on Okeechobee. Let's be very specific that we have high use commercial on Southern. I don't mind driving Southern Boulevard. I used to have to drive 10 miles to the grocery store. Now it's only four. You know, there's Red Barn. Um, and as far as you asked for a comment regarding FARS, it looks like under 0.08 or less would be great. Thank you. Uh, could, you uh, could you repeat what, uh, what you said about the property appraiser or didn't quite follow? My concern is, and I've heard this from various people throughout the state of Florida and in other states too, what happens, and we had a landowners meeting when this came up, the tax appraiser's office came in, and I think it may have even been the mayor who brought this issue up, so I'm just readdressing it. The concern was perhaps there are ad residential properties, or even not ad residential, simply residential properties that may be taxed at commercial rates that should not be. And then they may feel pressure. They may not realize what their tax rate should or should not be, and they may be feeling, well, with these tax rates, I need to request a high, you know, high commercial use. So my concern would be, are the people on Okeechobee Boulevard who are either ad or residentially paying their proper rates? Because we all know it's high and best use in the state of Florida because we didn't fight that either. Thank you. Well, for the record, Dennis Lipp, uh, North Road. I first moved to Lock Statue Groves in 1977. <laughs> And uh, Okeechobee was Middle Road. It ended right there at the uh, at the canal, and we looked across and wave over at the people on the other side. Uh, some of the things I just sort of set the record straight here: um, highest and best use has to have zoning first before you can increase some of these taxes. And so that's not going to happen on Okeechobee because there's no zoning. So highest and best use isn't going to happen. Uh, Mr. Kilday still here? Okay, there you go. Sorry. Uh, is that uh, the, the aim for Southern Boulevard isn't to have a bunch of uh, curb cuts along Southern Boulevard. The aim for Southern Boulevard, uh, from the comp plan on through, uh, was to have Tangerine uh, run from uh, one end of the town to the other, and then off of Tangerine have uh, whatever stores and whatever commercial development would happen, and therefore the back side of the buildings on the south side of Tangerine would be on the back side of, of uh, uh, showing their back to the, the you know, loading docks and things like that to uh, Southern Boulevard and then a, a service highway, you know, and then so Tangerine becomes the main road, uh, which would be, you know, more or less like a main street. Okeechobee has been a problem 
uh, since we first started talking, but this is what our third or fourth workshop, Jim, on this. And uh, and you know, the, and the questions never get any simpler, and the answers never seem to change. Uh, and so we have uh, lawsuits now from landowners that want things to change, and that I'm surprised Mr. Kill didn't bring that up. Uh, and that we uh, we're, we're faced with these situations. Some of the ideas that we might think about is when you look around the town of Black Hatch Grove, we have these little enclaves, um, you know, where there's people living on quarter acre and half acre uh, tracks uh, up along North Road, just uh, west of the uh, uh, Sunsport, uh, there at um, uh, uh, 142nd, and then the little, uh, you know, just off the of Sea Road, there's another complex in there, Los Angeles and San Diego. Mm -hmm. These, these small tracks, you know, these were done, you know, back in the cowboy days when the county all of a sudden, okay, we don't care, you know, back in the early 70s, all these places got bought out and built. Well, why don't we offer somebody an opportunity to uh, to consolidate some properties along Okeechobee and get maybe, what is it for the PUD, 50 acres? Well, it's it's uh, 50 acres for the multiple land use, but that's... Uh, that's restricted to Southern Boulevard. Well, we can always think outside of the box and maybe bring it up to Okeechobee. So we already have this uh, this PUD and multiple land use thing uh, along Southern. You know, so maybe along Okeechobee we have it so that people can uh, cluster homes. You know, we're not going to put a quarter acre track and set it out like a like a checkerboard, uh, but let's cluster. So if, if we've got uh, 50 acres and maybe we we cut it down to. Uh, uh, maybe five uh, five homes on or one home per acre, and then get that amount like we did for the northern part of the uh, college uh, property. That's now the college. We had that area with 20 or 19 homes that were, uh, you know, that were clustered, and there, there was, you know, therefore outlying open space. So these people wouldn't have to exit on and off of Okeechobee. They can go down to B Road or A Road or whatever and connect up and, and go out where everybody else is going, and then maybe have a portion of that property. Which would be, you know, some sort of commercial. I'm not thinking Publixes. I'm not thinking, uh, you know, Kmart's or anything like that. Uh, you know, but a neighborhood serving uh, commercial, a dog groomer, uh, you know, a dry cleaner, you know, some neighborhood serving commercial. Uh, you know, not not a not a big box. You know, but little boxes in conjunction with with a neighborhood. You know, so I think that's something we ought to look at. And I think we got to really, you know, we this has been going up and down so many times as. The name of the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council keeps coming up. Lawrence Corning sits on the uh, Planning and Zoning Board with me, and Lawrence brings up uh, Treasure Coast Regional Planning. There's a lot of people that can do planning, but no one has the reputation that Treasure Coast does uh, anywhere around here. Who does Palm Beach County go to when they want a comprehensive plan put together on what to have the intercoastal waterway look like? Treasure Coast Regional Planning. You know, so I think it's something that uh, we've been kicking this thing around enough. Maybe we just need to dig down and pay the twenty-five, thirty, forty thousand dollars to get an actual plan done by professionals uh, who aren't developers. And uh, I think once they get a, a feel for the town, read enough of these minutes over from the uh, four uh, workshops, uh, they would have something then to go on. Uh, we're not going to settle anything here tonight. Uh, but just to uh, set the record straight, as far as FAR goes, I think somewhere between 0 .08 and 0 0.1 is uh, the any maximum that I would uh, uh, care to see along, along with Okeechobee. 0 0.2 is too much. I mean, for 4,560 square feet in one acre, that turns in to be, uh, what, an 8,700 square foot building. Mm -hmm. That's the size of a, of a, uh, of a, of a CVS. Uh, you know, that's too big, you know, for something sitting along Okeechobee on one acre. So you add in somebody's got 10 acres, you know, and all of a sudden they got 80,000 square feet. That's two publics. Too much for Okeechobee. Thanks. Howard Bourne, E Road. I agree with a lot of what Dennis Lip said, but there's some major issues that keep cropping up that are never addressed. First of all, nobody knows what in the world you're talking about. The reason is nothing is, no facts are given. For example, should there be commercial on Okeechobee Boulevard? 
Nobody talks about what, for example, would be the maximum allowable percentage of Okeechobee Boulevard to go commercial. Without that fact, even the landowners on Okeechobee Boulevard can't make an intelligent decision. I have some experience in working on the neighborhood plan way back when before we were a town. We got the whole neighborhood plan written up and then somebody threw a monkey wrench into it because a couple of the large landowners on Okeechobee Boulevard with very deep pockets went ahead, contacted all the landowners and told them that the neighborhood plan that we had put together was going to make all their property worthless because we were going to disallow commercial development on Okeechobee Boulevard. Well, they all came running down to the meeting in order to protest the neighborhood plan. Now, what I informed them of, which they were never thinking about, was the fact that even Palm Beach County's wildest guess as to what percentage of Okeechobee Boulevard they would allow to go commercial was only 20%, which meant that eight out of 10 landowners are going to be left without the right to do that. Now, if you think your property is worth less than it could be because you can't be commercial and you have a church next to you, where do you see what it's worth when you have a 7-Eleven next to you? Because it's the guy with the deep pockets and the guy who can pay the lawyers who's going to wind up being one of those two people out of every 10 who can go ahead and develop their land on Okeechobee into commercial. So the first thing we need to know as a population in order to make some intelligent decisions as, to far, as far as whether we want this or don't want this, how do we feel about it, is how much we're talking about. We're never told anything about that. So all of a sudden, everything you guys are doing, it's all hot button issues. It's all people getting up and reacting to what they imagine might be the case without actually having any facts. Now, one of the things that's not being discussed is the expansion of Southern Boulevard. Now, in one of the town meetings, we had the Florida Department of Transportation come down and explain to us, as a courtesy, because we really don't care what you people think, that they are going to further expand Southern Boulevard. At the same time, they put us on notice that they've decided to severely limit the egress from Loxahatchee Groves onto Southern Boulevard. Now, one of the things that were going to be eliminated was D Road. You're no longer going to have the right to get on Okeechobee Boulevard from D Road. Now, I believe there are certain steps, proactive steps, that we could take in order to assure that when and if that further expansion happens, that we don't get cut off at D Road. Because personally, I see D Road as a quasi-Main Street, the one that bisects us the other way and goes out onto Southern Boulevard. They plan to take that away from us. If we go ahead and make some type of town center revolving around that area, as Dennis Lip said, and we go ahead and ask for a traffic light there, but do some type of proactive manipulation of the situation in order to keep them from closing it off when they do go ahead and do that. Now, personally, what I think, and a lot of other people think, is that Southern Boulevard should be the main corridor. The entrance and egress for all these developments should be Southern Boulevard and Seminole Pratt, not through Okeechobee. Do I disagree with making Okeechobee four lane? As a knee-jerk reaction, of course. But if I think about it intelligently, maybe it is a good idea. Okay? But don't ever try to sell me or any of the people I know in the Groves that if we were a real town, we would have this, that, or the other thing. That's a bunch of hogwash. We live here because of the way the town is. We didn't move here in order to make this town like other towns. Now, you want a four-lane Okeechobee, and if at the same time you want to reduce the speed limit to 35 miles an hour, or I would prefer 25 miles an hour. If Royal Palm Beach has 35 miles an hour right through their commercial area, why the hell can't we, wanting to be a, a, a Mayberry USA, 
have it 35, have it 25 miles an hour, and put in your four lanes, and put in your turnabouts, and put in your town hall, and everything else. And hell, nobody's going to come down that road. Now, according to what Nina Corning said, okay, it's, it's not the cons lack of construction that has reduced the traffic. It's when Southern Boulevard was finished. That's the path of least resistance. When I want to go to the airport with my birds, living only a half a mile off of Okeechobee Boulevard, I weave all through to get out to Southern so I can zip right down to the airport. I don't even mess with Okeechobee because after Okeechobee and Loxahatchee, you're face coping with Okeechobee and Royal Palm. And that's not a, an attraction either. So the more we push all that traffic to Southern, the better off we are. So I think, I think these things need to be determined, okay? What type of commercial are we talking about on Okeechobee Boulevard? That's never really nailed down. Everybody has a lot of ideas, but we're never told what is the worst we can expect. Is a 7-Eleven <clears throat> completely out of the question? We need to know these things, okay? We all know that a Walmart's not going to be there, and we know a Publix is not going to be there, but our convenience store is going to be there. Because if you think the college might create some type of a problem with people coming in and out, where do you have all-night convenience stores open selling beer? So, you know, these are the issues that need to be thought about, okay? Um, if you go ahead and address these issues and give us a clearer picture to look at, we can start making intelligent decisions rather than just come here and give you knee-jerk reactions. We can all be on the same page here. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question. Hmm? So, you're suggesting that um, uh, uh, we put together a list of, 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 of potential users that, that we bring back and mm -hmm. discuss? Not users, uses. Yes. Yeah, uses, uh, a, a different type, types of commercial businesses. That you feel are acceptable. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And a percentage of Okeechobee that in your plan you feel is acceptable to be commercial. That's an important fact. Because otherwise, what are you talking about? What are you going to do to my town? What are you going to do to the place I've lived, moved here because of the way it is, and lived here for over 30 years because of the way it is? What are you going to do to my town? And I know you're not going to do it. I'm using it figuratively. But give us some idea of the plan. Right now, it's just so darn nebulous. It's not giving me anything to feel good about. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, 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 we can do... Uh we can come up with alternatives. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the final decision is, is uh, as to what the specific uses are going to be. And um, if we're going to get to a point of capping the, the amount of, of, of space, that uh, uh, that's a decision <coughs> that the town's going to have to make. Now, I think that we can we can present some alternatives. Say, okay, if you have if we have, uh, say, for example, uh, uh, we're going to set up a couple of neighborhood type intersections. We're going uh, to allow, allow commercial to evolve around those intersections. And this is how much more, uh, space you're talking about, and these are the kinds of uses that, that we typically locate there. And then uh, we, can, we can identify uh, scenarios or examples for the town to consider. Um, we, can, uh, uh, we can also start with the, uh, with the situation that, okay, if we assume that there's a 0.1 FAR, which is what the commercial low is in the comprehensive plan now, and that happens all the way across the entire corridor, this is how much space we're talking about. I mean, I mean obviously, uh, nobody wants that. But, uh, but uh, 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 we, can, <laughs> we can tell you, uh, we can tell you how much space that would be if, if we commercialize the entire corridor. So we can start with that, and then maybe come up with some other uh, uh, other scenarios to say, okay, if we do this, this, or this, this is also what you're looking at. Um, but but ultimately, um, whatever goes in the conference plan is is uh, uh, is a decision that's going to be made by the uh, by the town. Of course. Well, let me let me add something there too, Howard. I, I mean, I I understand where you're coming from. I think you you have a desire um, to provide meaningful comment. I think that's where you mm -hmm. want to go, and so therefore you want 
something to react to. But what I would say to the whole group is that I don't think any comments made tonight, every comment is valuable. I think because we're not that far along, we want to hear input and thoughts and opinions because, again, you will get more chances down the line as we go through the process as we make proposals to the town council to provide that input and obviously at those at those points in time there will be time to make adjustments based upon that comment that you give at that point but i wouldn't say that you know everything you tell us is valuable tonight it's nothing nothing is non-meaningful even though you don't have something as concrete as you would like to be rolled out in front of you so you could react are we kind of mm -hmm. okay i mean just you know that's I mean, that, this is very helpful to us to hear what everybody has to say. I mean, but, but going along with, with what we were just told, I mean, if, if instead of being given, and I realize at this point that's all you can do, instead of just being given broad, basic things, if we're given different concepts, what would you like to see your town be like? Then you could go ahead and get a consensus as to what people feel rather than just people saying, no commercial at all. And you say, well, what about this and that? Well, I guess that would be OK. Well, then yelling no commercial at all was not meaningful input, because they don't really mean that. They're just saying that because they're afraid of what your idea or what the future might bring, allowing commercial. Because saying allowing commercial does not say what limits going to be put on it, what types are going to be allowed. And I, I think if there are plans laid out that, hey, you know, these are the different kitchens you can put in your house. Which one would you like to live with? Okay, you get a lot better input from the community. Thank you. John Ryan, 3508 A Road. Um, one thing that I've mentioned previously in workshop, and I think it's worth reminding people of, is that by default, we're becoming uh, Church Row on um, Okeechobee Boulevard. We need it. And the fact is that we don't really have a choice. Uh, as I understand it, um, if a church desires to locate on Okeechobee Boulevard, it's our property. Pretty much it doesn't matter what our local zoning and planning is. Uh, my sister-in-law had her neighborhood uh, off of Jog Road uh, totally changed <clears throat> when two churches moved in. Uh, they just totally changed the traffic patterns and the look of the community, and you know, to some extent, they're good neighbor neighbors and limited times that they're really disruptive, but uh, uh, I see more and more signs of church congregations using temporary spaces in the high school and other public buildings, and um, I'm not sure what happened to the church that was going to locate on Folsom. I think that kind of fell by the wayside, but I think Okeechobee Boulevard is a prime target, and I wouldn't be surprised at what the Vila property gets bought out of the bank's hands as a church location. Um, I just think that maybe if Jim, from a professional standpoint, would just remind people how the law works with respect to churches that desire to locate, um, perhaps on Okeechobee Boulevard. It's accessible. They can buy you know, sizable properties for not a lot of money. and. Um, you know, it, it just happens whether we think it's the right thing or not. So if you could, you could answer that a little bit, I'd appreciate it. Uh, rather than uh, rather than answer that right uh, right now, because that's that uh, uh, my, my partner Kevin McGinley um, uh, has, has worked on with, um, most of the uh, church approvals in Palm Beach County. Yet. He's extremely up on, on the federal statutes that, uh, that, that relate to, to freedom of religion. I, I, I believe on a, on, a, 
um, the larger parcels, the, uh, they, they would still have to come through the town for site plan approval. And um, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the way the comprehensive plan is set up right now, um, uh, churches are not an approved use in the, in the R5 district. They're, they're to be located in the institutional future land use category, so um, whether or not we, we would have to require them to come through to get a land use plan amendment, uh, that uh, uh, I'm not sure, sure about, but I can find the answers to those questions. Well, my sister-in-law's experience was that it was a residential neighborhood and uh, a Catholic church and then a, uh, I can't remember the other denomination, bought parcels and uh, they were sizable parcels and they could not be prevented from using the property for church. Well, I know it's I know it's extremely difficult if, if uh, for, uh, for example, a, a religious institution buys a house <clears throat> and they want to set up services in that house. Uh, it's it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to if not impossible to prevent that. If if, uh, uh, if the church is going to come in and and, uh, and develop a uh, large planned uh, 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 church facility. Um, I, I think that's a little bit different case, but like I said, I'm not positive on that, but I, I can find out the answers. Well, if we, see a house, to that question, we see a house being substantially renovated into a church on Okeechobee Boulevard at the present time. I am uh, a member of the Diocese of Palm Beach. So say your name again, again. I'm sorry, Aldo, say your name. Aldo Brasil. Thank you. I am a member of the Diocese of Palm Beach. Is one we want to build a church. Yes, we do have to go to the town. Yes, we do have to get your approval. And yes, we do have to get all the planning and zoning up. Yes, we do have to go to all that. We just cannot come here and build a church with us. I think you've got laws that make it substantially easier for you no. than any other no, 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 no. We have churches that have taken us three to four years to get approved. Long and yeah. No, 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 it's not easy. Just as up as building a building or building a house. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's it's, it's pretty it's, tough. It's the small uh, the small churches, churches that are setting up uh, 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 right. in, in a previously existing right. uh, structure that right. Very hard to well, Jim, address specifically what's going on on Oak Shelby Boulevard right now, that house that's being substantially renovated into a church. Yeah, that's a small. Yeah, yeah well, that, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, uh, that's where they certainly have most of the federal statutes on their side. So um, that can happen substantially different than what this John is We don't have we to build it. Like that. Like that. When you want to build that big church, <laughs> we have to go to the <laughs> It takes a long time. Well, like I say, I'll, 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 I'll get a, a more specific definitive answer on that for you. Sorry. Okay, my name is John Ambrose, and I'm here to represent the church that is worshiping now and we have a building that's to go up soon. In, it's an E Road in Okeechobee. Right? The, there's another church that's opposite us. I want to address some other things besides the church. The church, churches are part of the, the whole United States structure. It's, there's freedom of religion, religious liberty is one of the key things within the U.S. Constitution. So that the Constitution, uh, the country was founded based on religious freedom. So that's definitely. Now the churches serve a useful purpose. They, they provide counseling. They provide assistance to people. They, they help people to live a life of um, try to encourage them to live crime-free life and that sort of thing. So that there's a positive something as far as churches are concerned. Uh, but the, the question of planning, uh, I would suggest that one of the things beside these town halls, that after you have these meetings, 
essence of the meetings to be drawn up in statements, test statements, or and at some point, the at some later meeting, or you can send that to each home or property owner, and let them just if you have like a liquor type scale, strongly agree, strongly disagree type thing for each of these statements, let you, you gather some actual hard data, you know, so that you, when you're making plans for the future, you're not making plans out in the, you know, just by sentiment. You, you have hard data, work statistically, um, things that have been statistically examined so, so that you, your planning is based on scanning the environment and so on, and so that you can determine what is best for the future of the town. And you would not have to have as many town meetings because I'm saying that a meeting like this, you get the items and then you, somebody who can put them together, you get that done and then they, they survey the people and see what the data, um, you know, what kind of information will come from the data. This is part of what is done by people who are doing strategic planning and so And um, I suppose the, well, I wouldn't say anything more than that. If you need my service, I can, I need to be able to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hi. I'm Laura Turnbull, 3780 A Road. Um, and we live in Loxahatchee because we're all kind of unique. We like the lifestyle that we have. And actually, I like Carrie's idea of having a main street. And I strongly agree, we have a strong sense of community. I mean, after a hurricane, the water control district gets out there and whoops, all the neighbors have helped everybody. So I love living in Los Angeles. Girls. But, um, and I love hearing all the different inputs, but there, we don't have any basis to move forward. You haven't provided us with what information is happening around us. If every man, woman, and child in Los Angeles Grove could drive a car, even the newly born, we still wouldn't have a traffic problem on Okeechobee Boulevard. Okeechobee Boulevard is a connection basically from Seminole Crack east. So we have Southern, the people going east and west, and that goes from West Palm to Fort Myers, it's a state road. But there are, it's my understanding on the five-year plan is Roebuck Road, which goes through to State Road 7, which is a major reliever for the acreage. There are 40,000 people, we're less than 4,000. So our problem is not Loxahatchee people, it's being the uh, commuter pathway. And like Ken said, um, traffic control is our major issue because I can relate being back and waiting and waiting and waiting to turn left on uh, Okeechobee Boulevard. It's really tough and even with four lanes, you still can't turn left because that jerk is passing at 60 miles an hour. But what we need is, number one, for you guys, you said that you need a decision by March. But you've heard us voice that this was rather short notice and not well publicized. Okay, if you need a decision by March, why don't you inform us right now when your January and February charrettes will be? And we can put that on our calendars. Or else publicize it because it helps us in our community. Number two, give us more facts to deal with. Uh, we can't make a decision about a two-layer uh, two four-lane. Besides that, if the county doesn't even think that it's so important, that it's not on the plans for eight to 13 years, and if you know anybody about road planning, and some of us do, you know, if it's not on the plans, it's probably gonna be about 20 years. But us as a town, we, we have an image, we have this picture, and we're all independent, and we all should voice our thoughts, but we've got to have facts. Number one, when is your next meeting, next two meetings planned? Um, what's the flexibility of the March date? Because we might find that we come, you know, synergism is fantastic. 
when the sum of um, all the parts, or when the sum of all the parts is much more. Um, and we need information on what other roads there are to really be encouraged traffic. Because we're not having people from Fort Myers really coming down on Kachobi Boulevard. They're staying on Southern. It's the people from the acreage, but isn't, um, oh, what's that other road where we used to do? Persimmon. Persimmon. Yeah, I thought Persimmon was supposed to be a major neighbor. And, uh, you know, find out, I don't know, I know we have an Indian trail um, engineer here, or we did, Keith. Keith's gone. <laughs> They're four lining um, the Seminole Pratt Whitney Road. Yeah, Pratt Whitney, but that's yeah, north south. But the east west, yeah. because if you're, if you're on coconut, I've been tied up two and a half hours on coconut if there's an accident. Because I never realized before you had North Pike and you had Okeechobee. And nothing for, what is it, eight, nine miles in between? Wow. So, um, <clears throat> two things we'd like so we can be, make more important decisions. And I think it's great the way you let everybody speak their mind. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, George Perez, Regional Management 2, 14, 14563 over Joby. Uh, we have a problem, a traffic problem, on that D Road and over Joby. Uh, it's very difficult for our parents to enter and exit. Uh, there is the usual high speed. Uh, there is accidents and it's probably that have happened already. And uh, I, I will only concentrate on that corner uh, for these comments. Uh, I need help there, okay? Uh, also, maybe about three, four, five years ago, Loxahatchee Groves, in the town. What vision do we have of all that, of that town? A lot of people have said, we've been here forever. We like it the way it is here. Leave it that way. But unfortunately, there are traffic problems. There are egress problems around us that we have to deal with. And entering into the area of Okeechobee. Concentrating on Okeechobee Boulevard and making it a nice town Main Street thing would be an alternative. Uh, I don't know what's right or wrong. I can tell you that I have a problem with you road on the on a traffic basis. But I urge you to think about what you would like our town to be because there's a lot of smart people here and a lot of good people. So thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Don't be shy. Um, just six, six years ago, we incorporated here to preserve what we had. Somebody preserve means to maintain, and it's a original estate. How is adding commercial on Okeechobee Boulevard going to help us preserve that? How is adding commercial on Okeechobee going to help with traffic on commercial? That's going to increase traffic. How is commercial going to help people that live on Okeechobee that need to get out? It's going to do just the opposite. It's going to increase traffic on Okeechobee. Are we supposed to be trying to decrease traffic on Okeechobee? Putting commercial there is going to do nothing but increase it. It's going to draw people to it. We want people to go away from it so there's less traffic. Um, I do have a couple questions. We have this future land use map here. Um, it's interesting because it says future land use, not current use. Can you explain to me what exactly this is? Because this isn't how things were because it clearly says this is the future. So is this is what, is this what Palm Beach County was envisioning for the next 10 years for the land use to be? Or what was this? Uh, no, that's, that's the, uh, uh, that's the Tom's vision. Uh, when the, uh, before the town was incorporated, uh, uh, a large portion of, uh, of the town was RR5, and a large portion was RR10. Um, R10 is one unit for 10 acres, R5 is one unit for 5 acres. When the town put together its comprehensive plan, it, uh, it uh, just essentially said that uh, we, wanted, uh, we want to take that RR10 portion and make it RR5. So that 
um, that map that you have there is, uh, is the town's vision of, of, uh, of its future. Now, uh, uh, most of the, uh, as a matter of fact, all of the non-residential uses on, uh, on there were um, uh, uses that were already existing on Palm Beach County's future language map. So when everybody voted for incorporation, the town said, this is how we envision the town to be in the future. This is what we want. No, that came later. That, uh, that came after incorporation. Okay. The, the town was incorporated first. Mm -hmm. After it was incorporated, uh, the town um, uh, and its consultants drafted the conference plan, which uh, was approved by the council. That map is part of the conference plan. All right. Um, who is it that's pushing for development here? Is it developers? Or is it from residents that have to endure the traffic on Oak Detroit Boulevard? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And so who also pay exorbitant taxes on over nothing that's you know sure. a little teeny little house on six acres, but you're paying eleven thousand dollars in tax. Uh, I, I feel because I, somebody thinks that it's worth more than you know for something be yes. Even homesteaded, yes. I feel for those people, but at the same time, by allowing you to develop your property, negatively impacts everybody else. But you don't understand. When we bought the property and when we moved out here, I, I, 50 years ago we bought the through. property, and 40 years ago we built a house, a little teeny house for my parents. Okay, at that time, before the house was built, oh, we enjoyed living on the dirt road, which is what Okeechobee Boulevard was. It was a dirt road. What you all enjoy now on D and B and C and all the other roads, you enjoy that. We no longer have that lifestyle. It cannot be preserved for us. I understand. So that. guess what? We want to at least be able to sell our property for commercial potential so somebody can put maybe a, a feed store or maybe uh, I don't know car wash <laughs> I don't know something that would be for the town of Waxahachie but would also get me off of living on death road which is why it's a great thing that there's so many churches because somebody's going to get killed and hopefully they'll go to heaven because of going to the churches you know <laughs> seriously this is how it becomes a domino effect somebody Put the Okeechobee brought through, and they destroyed what you had, and now no, the domino it effect. No, wasn't destroyed then because well, that I, was before it all was, the but it, but it progressed. was developed. That's before Seminole Pratt was, you know. But it, but it, progre it progressed. It progressed from that into more traffic, and, and it's and it ruined it's continuing it. Continuing to progress. I understand that, but then progression now is going to ruin the rest of the town, and that's my point. I feel for where your position. How is it going to I strongly do. Somebody that lives on a dirt road somewhere. Oh. That's probably what somebody said when they when they put Okeechobee. Yeah, I have an idea. Why don't you buy our property? And do that? I didn't say. I, I'm not. Yeah. I fully appreciate your position. No, I do. You know. I do. Words are cheap. I do understand your position. My point is, you're sacrificing the rest for yourself. And, and I, if, 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 on, on, on my property, if I if I were to build a real estate office mm -hmm. and an insurance office. How would that impact where you live? Is that all your, so you're going to have 10, 15 people coming to your office a day, as opposed to two or three people a day? And every property on Okeechobee Boulevard that does that. Now, what are you going to do? Now, tell me how to operate my business? No, I'm not, no, I'm not. But the point is, you're going to have more traffic on Okeechobee if you put commercial there. It's simple as that. There's only nine houses from what he came up with that have single family residential. Right, but the more nine. traffic on Okeechobee affects me because I can't make There's a left hand turn. Apparently quite a bit of traffic. I know, I agree. There's way too much traffic. And, and, and we're, we don't make it worse. Having a little business for somebody in the town of Waxahachie to run in and, and buy bread or eggs without having to go to Royal Palm Beach All right. or to Wellington. Yes, um, I've heard lots of good ideas in this town tonight. Um, somebody said that there's a lot of smart people here, and I totally agree with that. Um, I kind of like the idea of having uh, Okeechobee as a corridor. 
And instead of criticizing tonight, I'm just going to throw an idea. I've seen several places where, you know, in order to deal with the traffic, maybe we can do like a central corridor on Okeechobee, right in the middle of it, for whatever miles or whatever percentage of it. And on both ends, just let people walk through. So we don't have Okeechobee open anymore for traffic to cut through the town. So that way, we can allow commercial on it, but we can also have a town hall, for instance, and you know, have a point of reunion for the people of this town. Maybe a coffee shop, not Starbucks, a coffee shop, you know, something, you know, like a town thing, something that is compatible with our town and that can benefit everybody, the commercial and the residents. Just a minute. Thank you. Nobody else on the <laughs> <laughs> Howard Warren, E. Road. I, I just want to add a couple things. I, it might be more productive to discontinue the linkage between four-laning Okeechobee and going commercial. One can happen without the other. That's number one. Number two, th this way you don't confuse the discussion. You don't get people speaking out against the four laning of Okeechobee Boulevard in order to be able to move traffic just because they don't want more commercial there. Okay, once you get over that hump by disallowing the linkage to continue, if you address the issue of what is the percentage of commercial that is going to be allowed on Okeechobee Boulevard. Now, I believe I could be wrong, but once that is set, then those that are, for sake of a better expression, left out in the cold, can go to the bo a board of adjustment and have their property taxes lowered because they can say, excuse me, my land is only worth as a residential lot. It has no chance of going commercial <coughs> because, lot, because Okeechobee Boulevard within the town limits is built out. Therefore, you have to change the value of my property. And that is a doable thing. So I would suggest those are things that we look at. Uh, we are unique. Uh, there are only 3,000 people, but every time a topic comes, we have 3,000 opinions. <laughs> However, we cannot be the only place that we are having this kind of a difficulty. I'm sure many towns have gone through this. Have we done any research on what can be done in terms of traffic? And uh, if, we, if it's not this country, I think we should step outside. And some many of the European countries have this problem. And they have addressed this. And so I think we need to look at them. I think I think like uh, Howard Warren said, uh, leave that commercial, non-commercial. First of all, you need to reduce the traffic on Okeechobee, how to handle the traffic. So whatever you can do to research and present it to the, to the public, I think that will help a lot. Yeah, just, uh, just to respond to that, I, I, uh, I called the uh, state land planning agency uh, three different times. And I said, uh, uh, I asked their planners, I said, I said uh, uh, if you guys up there dealt with, with any rural communities uh, similar to Loxahatchee Groves that, um, that, uh, that are struggling with uh, how much, uh, if any, commercial development to have and what techniques have they, they instituted to, to help control or, or limit the amount. And their response was, uh, all, uh, all rural communities are trying to uh, attract commercial development, and they don't know of any other community that is <coughs> trying to limit it. It's a real community. The real communities want um, uh, commercial development to increase the tax base, and they, they, uh, they search. 
their records that talked to all the planners that deal with the municipalities all through the state and could not find one similar case. No, but we already have said the southern border one is going to be the commercial. Yeah. However, I'm just addressing the Okeechobee border one. Well, well, that's what I asked about. I asked about uh, I, I, uh, uh, most of the planners up there um, uh, are familiar with Los Angeles Road because of the Calvin Judge issue and, and a couple of the large land use plan amendments that we had last year. So, so they're very familiar with the, with the town, uh, its, its characteristics, and with the issue along the road. I, uh, and I said, can you guys give me some help as to how other communities have addressed this? And they haven't come up with it. Well, I think we may still have to go and look at Europe, I think, with a lot of drinks. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Yeah. So just to give you an example, uh, the Netherlands, there was a place, the, the stoplights and traffic lights, there was an awful lot of accidents. They took it all out, and so they made a provision where the bicycles have the right of way. And they have eliminated just about all the accidents. It's just a simple little example, but I think that will, that will give you some idea as to how to address the problem. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think or how to look for it, you know, we, should, we need to do some, some research, you know, on the map. Yeah, yeah I think there are some examples in, in, in terms of the physical characteristics and traffic calming devices on open shows. We can find those, yes. Uh, but the, uh, the issue of, of commercialization, how much, uh, 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 how to limit it, um, uh, I, uh, you know, there's not many examples out there. You know, when we do that, we also do it wrong. For example, the new church on open shows were lower. Okay, the county did not make them put a roundabout or something over there. Or turn you know, no, you know, they didn't do it much of anything over there. So that's so we're going to have more churches. That you know, I mean, if we don't make them do some of those things, the entire you know how it impacts our town, we're going to see more and more of these problems. Like Howard Boards suggested, I think we need to address it in a completely different way. You know, don't even address it as commercial. You know, just look at how you can calm the traffic down and what we, what we can accomplish. We've got to look outside the box. Thank you. I would, I would agree with your comments. And certainly, you know, look, look and see other examples where we can find it. I think the one thing that I would say that makes this effort a little more difficult for us is uh, we don't, it's not like a town road like Tangerine where we have full control since we do have a partner with the county. And like Thais Gonzalez's comment earlier about taking taking it maybe trying to make it more of a main street, give it maybe more of a of a, a main road feel to the town. That's certainly something that's certainly an, um, an opportunity you could look at. But you're gonna have to we would have to work with the county and get their cooperation because now you're kind of taking one of their collector roads and downsizing it to more of a a uh, main road with the town. So, you know, those are the kind of things that we have to take into account for any kind of plan that we, that, that we gravitate to. I understand the mechanics is a big problem, I understand. But the, you know, you still have to do something, otherwise, yes. we're going to have a great big problem. Good evening. My name is Keith Harris. I'm 25 ABC, a resident of six years. I'm a second generation developer. May I be allowed to continue? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of good points I've made tonight, concerns about traffic, concerns about commercial development, concerns about keeping our town as we envision it. We've got to hold on to it because in time everything evolves, everything changes. So our foundations, like a building, have got to be strong and we've got to be solid. The purpose of this meeting tonight was to give our opinions to the people that are helped develop and guideline our future. It's got to be strong, it's got to be firm, it's got to be solid foundation with agreement. The opportunity to keep Lots of Hatchie Groves as we envision it requires good planning. It's been suggested on more than one occasion that we do take the scenarios that we've developed in workshops such as this one and the ones in the past and turn it over into professionals' hands to develop 
various scenarios that we can reconsider and, and glean the best out that we can. We do that when we develop a property, when I build a building. It's all design. We sit down, we develop our concepts, we develop our budget, we find out where we can tweak it for the best cost effective means and for the use. And that's what we have the opportunity here at Lachance Gross to do. We can really design the future of this town. With the information that's been provided by the various residents in this uh, community, I'd like to suggest that the town consider then turning it over into a professional uh, design group, a planner group, to develop scenarios that the town can then, as a large 34, what, 4,000 residents, 3,200 residents, 3,200, 3, can then sit down and say, I like this, I don't like this. We can give the town concrete opinions instead of chasing this idea and then it's being redirected by another idea. So with that, I'd like to uh, suggest that we take that step with the information, spend the money that it takes to get a professional planning service to give us a better reach of our future, to protect the residents, protect our financial interests for all properties concerned. We've got to be a town. Simple as that. Thank you. Closest thing that Treasure Coast Planning Council 
has to offer us for uh, you know an idea to follow. <coughs> but again, I just I want to reiterate that I think the most important thing to do and is put some money into getting a traffic light at depot because that's the biggest problem. Once that's resolved, <coughs> maybe it'll be a safer place to live. <laughs> you know, maybe it'll be easier for the people who live on Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Everybody come up with some good comments tonight, and I appreciate all of you showing up. Uh, Howard made an excellent point. <clears throat> We've been on numerous workshops, and yet we're still at a standstill. Now, <clears throat> we, we've had an opportunity for a commercial to come in at one point on Okeechobee Boulevard, but basically the way it works out is, is we want commercial, we don't want commercial. <clears throat> I'm like Howard, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the residents of Loxahatchee decide what kind of commercial they want. <clears throat> now I know using Folsom and Okeechobee and, and the Day property as an example, okay, and that's that's in the courts right now. <clears throat> but one thing that was going to go on that property, or at least we were told, was the indoor gun range. Now, Loxahatchee, that is natural for Loxahatchee. <clears throat> they, shoot, they shoot straight on Southern Boulevard seven days a week. They don't have no room to park. <clears throat> There's revenue coming in. But that's something that the people of Loxahatchee, I believe that most of us in Loxahatchee would enjoy that, especially if it was five minutes away from our house. <clears throat> and the way the times are changing, we, we may need to learn our guns a little bit more <laughs> and do a lot more practice. <clears throat> the other thing was, was a local or a family type restaurant in that corner. I believe that people, I, I think Loxahatchee has a spirit. I think we have a strong enough spirit where if we had a local restaurant in Loxahatchee, that we could we could keep that restaurant going. <clears throat> uh, Butterfields uh, Wednesday night is a hangout for everybody. Royal Palm Beach, Wellington, Loxahatchee residents. The discount's great, <clears throat> but there's groups of people that go in there every Wednesday night. <coughs> okay, the same thing could be in Loxahatchee. We could keep our businesses going. And now with the college coming in, you know, I, I would ha I would have to say that it would be hard for any business to fail in Loxahatchee Grove. At least that's what I believe. <clears throat> the other thing on that corner, it could have been uh, uh, a rental shop or <clears throat> the rental places. I, I know people in Loxahatchee that go to Wellington. They go to Royal Palm Beach. They rent chainsaws. They rent pole saws. They rent lawnmowers. Uh, there's businesses that if we pick as residents, <clears throat> we can make sure that. My priority would be it must serve the residents of Loxahatchee first. I'm, I'm not interested in serving the residents of Wellington or Royal Palm Beach. It doesn't bother me to be a community that will serve everybody and help everybody, <clears throat> but it has to serve our residents first. So therefore, we have to pick what we want to come on Okeechobee Boulevard if we want to make it commercial. <clears throat> now, I know a lot of people in here we, we go over to Okeechobee, we go to Cluiston, we go to Fort Pierce to a tractor supply place because that's the only place we can get our stuff at a decent price. And a tractor supply place is ag. It's not a Walmart or a Kmart or a Sears. It's agricultural that services the Western communities or could serve them. So we could pick what we want. And, and I believe the town council could control with, <clears throat> with the leadership of the people we can control what the developers is going to put in. If they want to develop their property, then we can control it as a town. I'm sure the developers are wanting something that's going to work, okay? And, and if we tell them what we need, uh, I think they'll listen to us. <clears throat> the other thing is, the, the last thing I think about is the revenue. But the truth of the matter is we can get revenue that would help us to make Okeechobee a better road to travel on, a safer road for the people. We talked about the red light. <clears throat> the red light, we budgeted $250,000 and we're working on the red light. My problem is we're not working fast enough, okay? But now, hey, the only way we're going to work any faster 
is when you come to the council meetings and you tell us you're tired of waiting, what's taking so long, where are we at on the red line on Okeechobee Boulevard? Is the county wanting to work with us or not? Jeff Santa Maria, just about everybody in this room probably knows him. He's told us that if we get together as a community, that he'll do everything in his power to make that red light happen. But we get to a certain point, and then it gets stagnated. We forget about it. And then again, Mark could help me out tonight. He could tell me where, where the red light stands and how far we are. But the ideal thing would be to come to the next council meeting and, and ask about the red light. Find out where we're at. But no, we need to pick what we want instead of workshop after workshop. You need to come with a workshop and tell what you want on Okeechobee Boulevard if you will even allow it. Now, the, the perfect opportunity, and I have to use this for an example because it's the only one I've got, the corner of Boltsum and Okeechobee, the day property. I always felt like that's on the corner of Loxahatchee. If it fails, it doesn't hurt us as bad if it's in the center of Loxahatchee. But what was supposed to go in there, I, I don't believe it would have failed. But that could have been our example. That could have been our excuse for future commercial. If, if it worked on the corner of Loxahatchee, it brought in the revenues, and it, and it serviced the people of Loxahatchee, then we can move from there. We could try something else. We do not have to put commercial along Okeechobee Boulevard all at a certain time. We can do it one year, we can do it five years, we can do it ten years down the road. <clears throat> but we need to call the shots. We need to put on there what we want if we will even allow commercial. And, and those are things you need to think about. So I would hope at the next workshop that you come with what you want. If, if, you, if you're going to allow commercial, then what do you want on Okeechobee Boulevard? And what are you willing to start with? You've got to have a starting point. It seems like we can't get started on anything. We talk, we talk, but we never get started. But if, if you want a better road and a safer road, and I'm speaking as a firefighter, Okeechobee, I don't care if it's dropped 6,000 in cars traveling on that road. And probably it dropped because of Southern Boulevard being put through, and hopefully when they make the corridor stronger towards the west, it might help us. But each year, it gets more and more dangerous. And we have more and more fatalities on Okeechobee Boulevard. So we've got an example of uh, Bill and Sons property. I, I believe there's about 60 acres in that corner, D Road. Okay? If you would allow commercial to go in there, and it would have to be a special exception because it wouldn't even qualify. Okay? The day property did qualify. It passed the application. Our PNZ board approved it. Okay, voted a, a three to two for it. Our planner agreed to it because it passed the application. But Okeechobee and D Road, 60 acres in there, if we allow a commercial business to go, come in on that corner, I'm going to expect the town and the town council to make that developer do something for us. You're not coming in, if I can help it, you're not coming in to Locks Hatch anymore and get no freebies. You come into our town with a commercial business, you're going to make our roads better, you're going to make them safer for the residents of Locks Hatch. A good example is the developers on Southern Boulevard and B Road. Okay, and, and I, feel, I feel like I, I slipped up because I, I was one that fought for from Okeechobee Boulevard to Southern Boulevard to have it paid and make the developers pay for it. So they've allotted about $1.4 million to Ojem from Okeechobee to Southern Boulevard. They've agreed as soon as they get their permits and stuff, then, then they'll pave it and they'll make it a safer place for the residents of Loxahatchee. And if the college doesn't get built till one or five years down the road, we've already got a safer road and the residents are already reaping the benefits of us allowing a developer to come in off Southern Boulevard. So that's what I'm looking for as a council member. <clears throat> I regret that I didn't suggest that we go all the way from North Road to Southern Boulevard. But I just wasn't thinking. I figured most traffic's going to be Seminole Pratt to Oakey and south to the college. And, and we can deter the traffic from coming through Loxahatchee. We've we, we got money to use police officers with traffic tickets. We can do speed tables. And, and uh, if I mention speed tables, the town is going to take the responsibility of the roads. We're working on that with the district. 
there's not there's not going to be no more speed humps. We're going to put a 30 mile an hour speed table in, and if, if people want to run in the canal, then then they're they're going to be liable. As simple as that. We're not going to make it an inconvenience for the taxpayers of Loxahatchee to try to keep these <coughs> crazy people that's running 60 and 70 miles an hour through our town. So decide on what you want for the next workshop. Decide on what you want for Loxahatchee. If you want something for Loxahatchee, if you don't want it. And then just be honest. Just say, I don't want commercial on Okeechobee Boulevard. I want it to stay like it is now. And the thing about it, I don't want it to stay like it is now. But I want us to control what our town becomes. Okay, what kind of roads we have, I want us to determine. How, how safe we make our roads, I want us to call the shots on that stuff. And we have to think about the future. The traffic is going to get worse. The population is going to grow. And, and when they start building around us, if we can have our town like we want it, then it'll be better for us. Brian <coughs> Yang, um, 1445. I wasn't going to speak, but someone asked me to uh, uh, talk on their behalf. Uh, basically, I, I'd like to say, you know, we, we, I, we need to be considerate of the property owners on OP. Um, you know, I, I heard Todd saying that you know decisions made you know made on Okeechobee will affect the rest of the town. Um, that's true, um, but you know we also have to consider that decisions that we make are going to be affecting these property owners. You know, these property owners they bought this property, their property it's it's an investment, it's their nest egg. Um, what we decided is going to affect their livelihood or their lifestyle. So we do have to be considerate about that. And you know, if, if we're asking them to make a sacrifice, we do have to be considerate, be considerate about what they are sacrificing for the town. Um, so you know, let's think about that before we basically make a decision that could ruin someone's life, you know, just for the town. So just think about that. And uh, thanks for everyone's participation. Um, a lot of good things were said tonight. Um, the most important one, I think, was under was mentioned at least twice and understood several times over. And that is the separation of understanding how much commercial the town needs as a versus separating it out and saying it's all. You know, do you want commercial on Okeechobee? Um, we have 3,000, roughly 3,200 people in this town. When I spoke to a county planner not too long ago, right around the time of the college, I asked him what that qualifies for. He said, oh, just about 7-Eleven. Oh, and since you have a big town, at best, a half a 7-Eleven here and a half a 7-Eleven there. Well, we got that. So, if we don't want any more traffic coming through our town, and we want to protect the lifestyle of this town and the people on Okeechobee, this town as a whole, then we need to be very careful to invite commercial traffic in from the outside. Maybe that was one of the considerations why it was on Southern, which is unusual, but we are our an unusual town, as you pointed out. So one of the ways that some of the Okeechobee property owners could potentially find themselves very happy are transfer of development rights. We brought this up before. And uh, it needs to be looked into. But if we keep putting all the commercial and give it away from free on Southern, it doesn't only need to go to Southern, it can go to other places too. It can go to other towns. You can work with the county to have receiving areas. That would mean that property owners on Okeechobee could receive some financial income towards them without actually developing it, without the impact of being on Loxahatchee <coughs> Rose. And 
the security that it, Loxahatchee will stay as green. When we're talking about subdividing, when we're talking about changing votes, we're talking about changing what Loxahatchee is going to go and look in the future, like in the future. We're talking about commercial. We talked about well, quite a bit about commercial here. Well, not a long stretch to think of commercial there then after all it's empty. What happens to all these people that are affected just by this one strip? It is a domino effect. When you have D road, D road was suggested as a traffic light. But keep in mind, it was suggested not as a two lane traffic light, it was suggested as a four lane traffic light. Without us really being ready for four lanes as far as I understand, now, traffic lights also come off and with quite a bit of commercial. How convenient that there's a little bit of an issue going on right there. Um, we need to figure out, number one, how much commercial does this town want? End of story. Beyond that, we need to figure out how can we calm down the traffic. And as most traffic engineers know, you build the roads, and the traffic will come. The only time that's not true is when you're in Alaska, when you build a bridge to nowhere, okay? Other than that, the traffic will come. It's been proven over, over, and over again. You're not going to be building it for Loxahatchee. You will be building it for everybody around you. And you will change what Loxahatchee looks like in the process. I understand the desire to want to have a nice way to exit on Okeechobee. As a matter of fact, I have that same desire. The people internally in Okeechobee have that same desire. So we should work on what that would look like. How could we make our traffic better? Would it be, like I suggested earlier, the cobblestone layover over the letter roads? Would it be a traffic light or a stop sign? What would be better for us? Would it be a turning lane here, or making sure that the traffic has to slow down so it gets a break. All these things should be discussed. Before we go and say, oh yeah, let's go and give this person commercial, and this person commercial, and, and, and just discuss Okeechobee on its own. It has to be discussed as a whole. And so therefore, we really need to invite the rest of the town to these meetings. And we need to separate the issue. That between traffic calming and commercial for the town as a whole. comment and asking uh, the consultant. I said that uh, we have a lot of speakers today and a lot of comment cards and what are you going to do with the comments? Are you going to put them together to make some conclusion and make some recommendations? I haven't seen that yet. I'm afraid that today we might be running into a situation we may have to repeat the history. I hope that's not going to happen. I heard a lot of comments supporting on one hand supporting on the other end. We also have some comments in the middle. I hope that uh, the town manager will listen to a couple of speakers' comments there, put together some ideas, suggestions, uh, and make them meaningful to the town. Uh, make use of the comments, suggestions, be constructive. Uh, we know somebody lives on uh, Okeechobee. This is their livelihood. The investment. Uh, I think it's, it's not fair for someone to have some idea, some platform, and take away their right. Neither should we allow the people of Mokichobi to take away the right from people living away from Mokichobi. I think we need to balance it. I think we need to come to a, 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 a compromise to allow that to have the least damage to their life with the best interest of the town. And uh, to say we should not 
develop Okeechobee, I think it's extremely, to allow total development on the street on Okeechobee, we have extremely. I hope that we could come to the middle ground. Uh, to be the best, allow them to uh, capitalize their life saving. At the same time, don't undervalue people who don't want it. I live in the north side of Okeechobee. I can tell you how I feel, but my is only one person. But I hope that the town, please make use of comment, like somebody suggest, hire a professional to, to work with Jim uh, to make some conclusion for us and make it to decide what we want to do and let the town council endorse it and move forward. Please don't have another workshop two years later and do the same thing. No, I'm getting old. Thank you. Uh, uh, we just uh, uh, defend ourselves a little bit on that one. Uh, uh, we did do a, a, a summary uh, uh, of the previous workshop, uh, which which was uh, was presented to the council. And, uh, uh, shortly after, we had a couple of times. I'll, I'll be glad to, to, uh, to make a comment. I think you could use the experience has what today to comment on today's uh, audience and, and make the best out of it. Don't just put it on the shelf and then do nothing. I mean, we have some changes in, in the leadership, in the government board. Um, they might think differently now. So I hope that make use of it. Thank you. Thank you. Keith. <coughs> Excuse me, Keith Harris, 25 BBC Road. Uh, just a, a quickie here. Um, my family being a developer contractor down in Monroe County for some 30 years. We only have a two lane road down in the Keys. Traffic was an issue there. Development is going to be uh, 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 a never going problem as people have property, they have a right to do with their property, develop, keep it as it is, make an investment for a future. Uh, Ms. Corning suggested the TDRs. TDRs work very well in Monroe County to help control development. Also, the consideration of a uh, rate of commercial growth ordinance to start off at a slow pace to closely watch the development so that we are protecting the interests of the citizens, but still allowing individuals who have properties to do what they wish to do with it. Thank you. Todd McClendon again. Um, I want to make two comments. Uh, it seems like the majority of us all at least agree that Okeechobee Boulevard is a mess and it needs to be fixed. Even the people that live on Okeechobee Boulevard agree with that. Why don't we focus on fixing Okeechobee Boulevard, make it pleasant for everybody, the people that live there and off of there, and perhaps the people that live there, if we do a good enough job, will enjoy this town and decide to stay instead of developing their property. So I think we can all agree on that, at least. Everybody in this room agrees that that's a problem and it needs to be focused and addressed seriously. The second comment I need to make is, it kind of doesn't contradict what I said last time, but there's a big showing here tonight of people that want to develop Okeechobee Boulevard, and there's not a huge showing for people opposed to, the, to it. So unless there's people that, like me that oppose it, you've, you really have to listen to these people because they're the majority here, it seems, that want the development. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but I want to do it. I don't know.
And uh, it's not a more of our, it's going to be a limit to, for us to get him in there. Because that more of ours is going to be made bigger. And just talk mm -hmm. with your team, which they're going to limit us to go in into a DOT road. And they've been talking about <coughs> that for the last four or five years. Southern Boulevard is going to become bigger. Southern Boulevard is going to be a main road. It's going to be like an highway. Okeechobee Boulevard is going to be a center road. No matter what, what we do or what we say, people are going to build around us. So we're going to have to use Okeechobee Boulevard. It's an exit. We cannot stop the people who are driving on the road. Still, they have a two-lane road, a four-lane road, to six-lane road. Doesn't matter. You cannot go in and stop people to say, well, you cannot drive to our city. They don't drive to the city regardless. So Old Chubby Boulevard, the most important thing is the four-lane is going to come in. It'd be smart for us to work with the county to say, we want our lanes, we want traffic lights. We want a nice landscape, or whatever we want. It'd be smart for us to work with them and give them our plans of what we want or what like to see done on Chubb Boulevard. Because when they ready to come in, there's no stopping. And then that time we're too late. They say, well, we want burial walls, or we want landscape, or we want it. It happened too many places, too many times. So that should be our goal, to work with them, but to get as much as we can out of them. And when we're talking about the traffic line, uh, the traffic light, I think we should get the county to pay for it, because the county is going to be doing the road. The county is going to four-lane that road, or five-lane, or whatever they're going to do. And every traffic light is $250,000 for the traffic light. So we don't need one, we probably need two or three. And just like I said, be careful about Southern Boulevard. Because there's going to be a day when DOT is going to come along and they're going to say, you cannot use this road, you cannot use this road, you cannot use this road. And it will happen. You know, so that's about it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Anybody else like to comment? Chicken and I own some property on uh, the north side. And I think what I've heard tonight is that we are in a rare opportunity to control what's going to happen. I think what people have said about the inevitability of some commercialization. Eventually it's going to be taken out of our hands. Having a good comprehensive plan of what will serve the town. And by the way, I don't know, I'm not, I have nothing to do with it. Uh, I think if you have a commercial district, you can lower the speed limit. You can't do it the way Okeechobee Road is now because the county is going to control it. They put up 40, 50, whatever they put up. But if you actually got a commercial district, you can make it 25 or 30 miles an hour. That'll slow traffic and that'll, the commercial may actually improve local traffic condition. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Last chance. <laughs> so two years now. We, um, okay, well, nobody else wants to speak. Um, our plans, as I indicated at the beginning, we're going to have another workshop in, in early to mid-January. We'll try to get more than seven days notice out. We heard what you had to say. It will be primarily for the owners of the Southern Boulevard and, of course, all residents of the town. But again, Okeechobee uh, property owners will also be invited. So if anybody couldn't make it here, or you know, we, we can discuss both roadways. Because we're going to be doing comprehensive plan amendment policies and, and guidance that will address both roadways. So we will take into account, we've heard a lot of good comments tonight. I have a question about that. Um, one thing I will be mailing letters to Southern Boulevard residents, or it will be to to Southern, well, Southern, nothing. We're going to look at Just Southern Boulevard residents. Yeah, that's the plan. Is, okay. is, is I just, just, okay. just specifically notified. Okay. Southern Boulevard. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
But we'll try to get more than seven days notice out so that if you want yeah, to no, it'll probably be this room. Be this room and it'll be the same kind of setup in the bottom. Once again, I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, we appreciate your comments. Good job. Oh, thank you. You're here, right? Yeah. Thank you.